This week's video is on picking up stitches for button band. As always, if you'd like to jump directly to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. Last week we talked about picking up stitches along a vertical edge when the existing fabric and the new fabric were the same stitch pattern, garter stitch, stockinette, or a stockinette-like fabric. On vertical edges, you don't pick up one stitch for every row the way you pick up one for one along horizontal edges. Instead, you end up skipping picking up stitches at the ends of some rows. We talked about how for stockinette, those common ratios are often two stitches for every three rows or three stitches for every four rows. The process for picking up stitches for a button band is similar, but you have to take into account that the stitch pattern used for the button band is likely to be different than the stitch pattern used for the body of the sweater. Stitch patterns commonly used for button bands are ribbing, garter stitch, and seed stitch. Ribbing causes the fabric to pull in, compressing the stitch gauge, while garter stitch and seed stitch have compressed row gauges, which cause the stitches to spread wider. In addition, button bands are frequently knit on needles that are smaller than, the, than those used for the body of the sweater. Since stitch pattern and needle size can affect stitch gauge, the number of stitches that you need to pick up for a button band may not be the same as what you would pick up for a fabric that was knit in the same stitch pattern. So how do you calculate the number of stitches you need to pick up? along a vertical edge for a button band? Well, the process is basically the same as for any vertical edge. First, multiply the stitch gauge of the new piece of fabric by the length of the vertical edge to give you the exact number of stitches needed. Second, use an easy ratio for picking up stitches to get you through the initial pickup process. An easy ratio has you consistently pick up the same number of consecutive stitches before skipping a stitch. So for stockinette, that easy ratio is usually two stitches for every three rows or three stitches for every four rows. Third, compare the number of stitches you have picked up using your easy ratio to the number of stitches you actually need, and then increase or decrease accordingly in the first row of the stitch pattern. As a review of how that works for stockinette, let's look at an example. Stockinette gauge is five stitches and seven rows per inch, and the vertical edge is 10 inches long. Therefore, you need to pick up stitches at a rate of five stitches per inch, and five stitches per inch times 10 inches is 50 stitches. You have 70 rows, but you need to pick up 50 stitches. If you use the two to three ratio to pick up stitches, you'll end up with about 47 stitches. You could then increase three stitches on the first row to bring the count up to 50. Alternatively, using the three to four ratio would result in 52 or 53 stitches. In that case, you could decrease a couple of stitches in the first row. Regardless, by the end of the first pattern row, you would end up with the correct number of stitches. So how do we apply this technique to button bands that would be knit in ribbing, garter stitch, or seed stitch? For ribbing worked in the same needle size used for the body of the sweater, you can use the same pickup number that you would use for stockinette, but you may need to adjust your total stitch count based on how you balance the stitch pattern. For example, with knit one per one ribbing, you might want all of the edges, top and bottom, to start and end with knit one, so you'd need an odd number of stitches. For knit two purl two ribbing, which is a multiple of four stitches, you might want all your edges to start with knit two on the right side of the fabric, so you would need a multiple of four stitches plus two extra to make that happen. For ribbing, my preference is to always add the extra stitches needed rather than subtracting any. If you happen to know what your stockinette gauge is on those smaller needles, you can use that stitch gauge as your guide for the number of stitches per inch to pick up along the edge. But if you don't, then you need to swatch. You can swatch in stockinette or you can swatch in ribbing on the needles that you'd like to use. So here I have ribbing in three different sizes. This is the ribbing that was worked on the same size needles as um, the stockinette. This is two sizes smaller and this is another two sizes smaller. So they were, these are all 22 stitches and you can see that they're all different uh, lengths. So the pickup ratio is going to be different for each of them as well. So to figure out um, your ratio for ribbing, you 
do a little swatch of the ribbing. You lay out a certain amount of stitches on the vertical edge. I've got three inches here because this little sample isn't very long. And then I took my ribbing and I pinned it down so it lined up with one edge here and then I stretched it the amount that I thought was appropriate. So you wanna stretch it out so that the, the ribbing lays flat but the fabric is not actually stretched out. So, um, so then I pinned that here and then I can count up the number of stitches that I have here. So here I have about 17 um, stitches and I've marked out three inches here, which was 21 rows. So it would be 17 stitches and 21 rows and I would pick up um, accordingly. Once you figure out what that, that ratio is that you want um, to pick up for the entire button band, you can practice on a shorter span of stitches just to make sure that it's going to lay the way that you would like and that the, um, the edge isn't pulling in too much or that it isn't going to be too floppy. So when I made this button band, I picked up about this many stitches and I knit a sample band to see how wide I really wanted it and to see whether I liked this particular ribbing. Because garter stitch and seed stitch have compressed row gauges that cause the stitches to widen, many knitters need to pick up fewer stitches than they would for stockinette when using the same size needles. For myself, I know that if I use the needle two sizes smaller, I can get the same stitch gauge and garter that I got with stockinette on the larger needles, but this wasn't always true for me. In my old knitting style, I would get the same stitch gauge with the same needles whether I was knitting stockinette, garter, or seed stitch. So you need to swatch to know what your stitch gauge is. These two swatches are both 22 stitches wide, knit and garter stitch on two different needle sizes. This one is the same size needle that it was knit, used to knit um, the stockinette, and this one is two sizes smaller. You determine which fabric you like, and when you de determine which fabric you like, then you determine then you look at the stitch gauge for that piece of fabric, and then from there you calculate um, the ratio you need to pick up along the edge. If your garter stitch gauge is 4.5 stitches per inch, and your row gauge on that vertical edge is seven rows per inch, then you will need to pick up 4.5 stitches every seven rows. For a 10 inch edge, you will need to pick up a total of 45 stitches. Okay, but how do you even figure out what your easy ratio is when you have a 4.5 to seven ratio? Divide the stitch gauge you're using for the button band by the row gauge of the vertical band. In this case, you divide 4.5 by seven and you get 0.64. Now compare that to these easy pickup ratios. You can see that 0.64 is very close to to the two to three ratio of 0.67. So use two to three as your easy pickup rate, then decrease the very few extra stitches you'll end up with on that first pattern row. Okay, so now you know how to calculate the total number of stitches you need to pick up and how to figure out what your easy pickup ratio is, but you may be wondering why I suggested using a smaller needle size for garter stitch and seed stitch because they tend to spread, but I didn't suggest using a larger needle size for ribbing even though I said that it pulls in. Rib stitches are typically larger than their stockinette counterpoints when they're knit on the same size needles. There's more slack between rib stitches than stockinette stitches from switching the yarn position back and forth, and that slack works itself into the stitches, enlarging them. Since the stitches are already larger, that is enough to compensate rather than changing needle sizes. One reason knitters frequently use smaller needle sizes for ribbing is in order to make the stitches more equal in size to the stockinette stitches. In that case, you end up having to pick up more stitches in order to combat the ribbing's desire to pull in. This swatch is knit on, on needles two sizes smaller than the stockinette and they are much closer in size. Once you know the total number of stitches that you need to pick up along that vertical edge, you can use any strategy you like in order to get yourself to the correct total number of stitches. You don't have to use that easy ratio and then correct on the first row of pattern. I offered several strategies last week for how you can arrive at the correct number. Well, that's it for this week. Next week, I'll be demonstrating how to pick up stitches in the center of the fabric rather than along an edge.
If you'd like to see the rest of the videos in this particular series, there's a link to a playlist right up there above my head. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd really appreciate it if you did. You can either uh, hover over my face over here and then click on the subscribe button when it pops up. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can just tap on my face and then click on subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.